Hello everybody and welcome to Theology 101. In a previous video, I did a versus video topic about women pastors. In case you missed it, I'll leave a link for the video above. The two views that were compared were egalitarianism and complementarianism. From that video, a subscriber named Jeff Jeff asked this question. Could you do a video on if a complementarian can marry an egalitarian? The reason why this question is important is because it highlights the need for us to know how to think through disagreements we might have with other Christians. So in today's video, I wanna show you how the sausage is made and show you the process of how I think through secondary issues. The first step is to triage properly any secondary issues within Christianity. Do you know what triage means? The word comes from the French word, which means to sort. The triage officer at a hospital is the frontline agent who decides which cases should be seen first and which can be seen later. Later. For example, a person bleeding out from a gun wound will take priority over a person with a common cold. And the same thinking should apply to Christian doctrines. So before trying to address disagreements within Christianity, we need to first go through a theological triage to determine the importance or the urgency of a matter. The most important level of doctrines are called the essential doctrines. These are doctrines that are essential to the Christian faith. And if a person does not affirm these doctrines, then they are outside of orthodoxy or in heresy. Examples include Include the doctrine of the Trinity or the humanity and divinity of Jesus. The next level of doctrines is called secondary doctrines. These are doctrines that are important for the health of a local church, but disagreements on these doctrines does not make one side heresy. An example would be infant baptism. Christians can disagree on whether infants should be baptized, but it will be very difficult for people to come together at a local church if they disagree on this matter. Will the church do infant baptisms one week? and then believers' baptisms the other week? This is why Presbyterians and Baptists have a hard time coexisting together at a local church level. The next level of doctrines are called tertiary doctrines. These doctrines are important to Christian theology, but are not important enough to justify dividing a local church. For example, Two pastors at the same church can have different views on young earth versus old earth creationism, and yet they can still coexist. The local church unity does not depend on agreement on tertiary doctrines. It might affect a sermon on Genesis 1-3, through but it probably won't be an issue for everyday life and ministry. Then the final level of doctrines are called personal convictions. These are doctrines that don't matter when it comes to relating with other people in ministry. These will be debates over the different types of angels, or the different interpretations of 1 Peter chapter 3 verses 19 through 20 when Jesus preached to the spirits in prison after his death. Now the problem is that not every Christian identifies every doctrine the same way. A legalist will be tempted to say that every doctrine is an essential doctrine and that any disagreement over these doctrines is heresy. On the other hand, a theological liberal might say that no doctrines are essential and every doctrine is a matter of personal conviction. Although Christians might triage doctrines differently, it is still important for us to think through this theological triage before deciding how we are to disagree with other Christians. So with this triage in mind, Let's address Jeff Jeff's question. Can a complementarian marry an egalitarian? Is this doctrine an essential doctrine, meaning that disagreeing on this doctrine will make one person outside of Christian orthodoxy? The answer is no. We will say that both complementarians and egalitarians are both Christians. Is this doctrine just a matter of personal convictions, where it doesn't affect everyday life or ministry? And we will say no, because disagreement on this doctrine does affect ministry on a local church level. Two pastors who disagree on this doctrine will have a hard time serving together at the same local church, because one pastor would allow women to preach in the pulpit, while the other pastor would think that the Bible prohibits that and will not allow it. So on a big picture level, a complementarian and an egalitarian could marry since they are both Christians. However, there is another step we need to do, and that is to triage the relationship. The closer a relationship, the more important agreement will be. For example, it's one thing to disagree with a coworker on whether people should have children. You'll probably have healthy debates about the pros and cons of having kids, but this disagreement shouldn't affect your relationship. But it's another thing for you to disagree with your spouse on whether people should have kids. In fact, this disagreement will affect the trajectory of your relationship, and some couples might even break up because of this disagreement. So the same disagreement will have a different impact on a relationship depending on 
the intimacy of that relationship. This is also true when we talk about disagreements over doctrines. A Baptist will have no problem being friends with the Presbyterian, or continuationists would have no problems being friends with the cessationists. But if they are friends who serve in the same local church, then these disagreements will become more pronounced and have a greater impact on their relationship. In other words, the context of a relationship matters. So where would marriage fit into this triage? Well, marriage is the most intimate human relationship. This doesn't mean that you and your spouse have to agree on everything because that will be impossible. But know that disagreements even on secondary doctrines become more pronounced in a marriage versus other relationships. Also, disagreements between egalitarians and complementarians directly affect their view of marriage itself. Most marriages won't be affected by differing views on the age of the earth, unless one person is a young earth scientist who spent his or her life devoted to upholding a certain viewpoint. But the disagreement between an egalitarian and a complementarian directly affects marriage itself. One person enters a marriage believing that the husband is the head or the leader of this marriage, while the other person believes that the husband does not hold a special role in the marriage but that the husband and wife are completely equal. One person will enter the marriage believing that God calls you to raise their daughters with the teaching that they should submit to their future husbands, while the other person will raise their daughters with egalitarian beliefs. So if a complementarian and egalitarian were to marry, one of you would need to go against his or her beliefs in order for this marriage to work practically. And depending on the person, he or she may not want to compromise their beliefs. Therefore, going through the step of triaging is very important. If you label this issue as essential or a secondary issue, then it will be difficult to coexist with your spouse on a practical level just like it is difficult for Baptists and Presbyterians to work at the same church. However, if you label this issue as tertiary or a personal conviction, then it shouldn't be difficult for one person to give up his or her view in order to make the marriage work. So I cannot give a definitive answer, Jeff Jeff, because it all depends on how each person triages their view. However, I do hope that this exercise was helpful in helping you think through disagreements you might have with other Christians regarding secondary issues. Also, since knowing how to apply the Bible is important, I want to start a new Friday series beginning this Friday going over some of the most popular verses that are often misapplied. If you found this video helpful, please like and share it with a friend. If you missed the previous verses video about women pastors, I'll leave a link for you here to watch. Until next time, see you.